So conversation at the Stanislaus County Fair, have you guys talked about uh, pushing that date back like El Dorado County did, or is it just unique? To we, we had those talks. Um, probably not as in-depth. There was a, a preliminary conversation, kind of spitballing the uh, pros and cons and how to even get to that point of doing it. Um, they definitely got real in-depth and they got it all figured out where they're doing a livestock show on the normal fair dates and they're pushing back their fair. Um, I can see how they could possibly do it, but the the number of details you have to cross to set up a new fair date, things you have to bring into place with the routing of all of your vendors, your carnival, uh, you know, their food, um, the games, the entertainment, just uh, there's a lot to go into it. And with the COVID environment right now, not knowing how it's going to be in June, July, or October, um, that, that's a tough call. It's a real tough call to do. As an outsider looking into the fair, as a person who just goes to the fair, you know, aren't all those connections and all that vendor contract, aren't they already kind of set right now? Why is, why is it not possible to just kind of pick everything up and move it, move it three months down the line, just keep things in, the same? In a normal year, yeah, you're right. We have stuff set, you know, two months after a fair. Usually we end in, in the middle or end of July. We got stuff lined up for the following year by October, November. This year, it's been different. Trying to get commitments has been a little tougher. Um, you know, on the entertainment, a lot of the entertainers now want guaranteed contracts. How are you going to step out and do a guaranteed contract for 30, 40, 80 grand for an artist, not knowing if you do a fair or not? You know, we had to really struggle to get out of our contracts last year because of COVID. So you go to make sure that you've got a sure thing in place before you start signing these deals. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of these food vendors and other entertainers that we bring in, a lot of them may have to have had closed up shop. They've had no work. A lot of these folks live off of the fairs and festivals and not have an event, being self-employed for a year. That's a big, uh, a big chunk of change to lose that off of. So it's, we still are finding out who's not operating anymore. And so we got to try and fill it. Do we not fill it? Um, right now we're getting a couple of verbals on some commitments. Those that are available to come out to the fair. Um, there's been a handful saying, hey, I'll give you a verbal, but if I can find a for sure thing booking out of Arizona or Florida or wherever else, I'm going there instead. So we're dealing with all that also. So it's definitely not a unique, not a, uh, not a, a traditional year right now on how you book and how you plan. So what about right now? Where is everything at for the Stanislaus County Fair right now? So we're moving forward with our livestock sale and show. Uh, we'll, we feel real comfortable that we get to July. We can definitely do the livestock. Uh, our fair dates are announced, move forward with the fair, but you know we're still in that red tier, or the uh, purple tier for our county. You know, with our COVID tier in purple, we got to get to a uh, orange and yellow to consider doing kind of crowds and groups. Um, so I don't know if we'll get there in time, and we can't just get into yellow or better you know, middle of June and say, oh, hey, we're two weeks out. Let's do a fair now. Uh, we got to be hitting yellow by April. You know, we got to be in April, yellow in the next couple of months to have a solid chance of really putting together a real fair for the community. Otherwise, we're going to be kind of ad-libbing it and see what we can do, how we can do it. Um, we still have to talk to the county health department. We clear it through them. We verify what we can and can't do. And I have to go to the state also. I have to go up to Sacramento to our agency and make sure that California Department of Health and the Department of Food and Ag will give us a clearance to do a larger event that has a gathering component to it. So there's a lot of unknowns that we won't know until we get there. It's not an easy decision to make, uh, basically. And my understanding is that it's not entirely off the table at the moment. It's still kind of a wait and see situation, maybe? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what our drop dead date would be to actually have to cancel a fair if that was becoming an issue based on the COVID and our, our tiers and whatnot. Um, you know, if it came out to it where we could probably change the dates and back off a little bit, do something different, I'd be all for that. Whether it be a traditional county fair or it'd be a fair party, as I'll call it, uh, some fair food, some carnival rides, uh, some drinks, and just have some good local entertainment. And we just make it celebration of the community, just pure community driven in all aspects. Um, that could be doable. It could be a fair harvest party, but it's, it's not something that I think we can 
get to right now. You know, we start talking about some of the conversations, but you know, our first goal is to have a fair in July. That's what we're focused on. That's what we want to do. And when we get to that uh, April, May, June, we'll do a lot better how July looks. And then if we got to do something different, we'll just pivot and we'll go from there. How much would it mean to you after everything that happened in 2020, all the slings and arrows of that year, to come roaring back with a full, safe Stanislaus County Fair? Uh, it would be absolutely amazing. Um, the lowest point of my entire career was having to cancel the fair last year. Uh, that was my lowest point, bar done professionally. Uh, so we come back a year later and it just pull off something, do something phenomenally great for the community and for everyone working it would be huge. Um, I still get comments on how much it hurt not having the fair in the community. So a lot of people need it. A lot of people plan their year around it, whether it's growing the animals or growing vegetables and plants and, and plan their artwork. They, they live for the fair. So to come back and have a huge safe fair would be absolutely uh, phenomenal for everyone involved. I know my board of directors, um, tough year for all of them. Um, it's been tough here for all the staff, you know, the staffing issues have been brutal. So to get everybody back and get everybody, the whole crew back together and going again, would just be phenomenal to do. Um, and, and the community wants it and we want nothing more than do it as well. So yeah, it, it would be, it'd be probably the pinnacle or the, the best thing we've done professionally going forward from here was to have a fair come back. I mean, I can't imagine how it was back in World War II where they took the year or two off and they came back the following year. Uh, so it'd be something very similar to that coming back and just saying here, we're here. We haven't left. We're going to keep it going. You can't stop us. That would be this be, be great. Be awesome.